Hey, Michael C. Colin here. How are you? Hey, Michael. David Priest. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Well, cool. It's really early for me, so I'm tired. <laughs> I get it. But that's all right. We've been trying to get this together since I saw you in Bakersfield. Yeah. Uh, no, man. I, I, I get the tired thing. I'm 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 a little run down myself. It's not as early here. Where are you at? In California? Uh yeah, California. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, my apologies. The problem is we start rehearsals at a uh, specific time and this is my window, you know? No, it's cool, man. It's all good. Uh, I ain't complaining. You know, I get up to talk to you anytime. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got my wife here, too, because she's a big fan. You know, we always come and check you guys out and whatever. Oh, that's awesome. Seeing the what's your, what's, is different. <laughs> yeah, what's your wife's name? Becky. Hi, Becky. Michael. Hey, Becky. How you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> and you guys get up this early every day? Oh no! No, nope. <laughs> no we're, we're we're late night people, man. That's why I was like, he wants to do a win. <laughs> like, geez, man, it's like that's when my my parents used to get up that early, but I was never. There. <laughs> I know, I never get up at six a.m. or at it's seven a.m. there, right? Yeah, seven a.m. Yeah, um, but I had to get up and do a little prep, so. <laughs> but it's yeah, I'm, I'm usually I'm an eight o'clock or eight thirty, you know. Uh, I'm on Nashville time now, so that one hour difference really throws me off. It's incredible. Right. right. I'm good, man. I am good, and I'm, I'm excited to talk to you guys. So thanks for having me. Very cool, man. Yeah. And I know you've got a busy schedule, and uh, yeah, I commend you for uh, you know being able to get out there and, and do as much as you do, man. Because the older I get, I just don't want to do much of anything anymore. Uh, it comes a time when you want you start slowing down and you want to slow down. And uh, you know, it's it's interesting with me because I've uh, over the past fifteen years, ten years especially, I've been on uh, on full speed mm-hmm. and you know doing so much and <clears throat> all these opportunities keep coming and I just I look at it this way I I, I think well that day's going to come when I can't do it you know and um it's certainly approaching faster than, than than not and I just thought well I'll keep taking them and I'll keep doing them and and the problem is with that uh I'm more busy now than I've ever been and um yeah it I'm fifty, gonna be fifty six, and I'm still young. But you know, I I start thinking about retirement and taking more vacations and whatnot, and you know, it's just not in the cards right now. Right. No, I, cool. I remember years ago uh, um, talking to you before reuniting Striper. You were doing your uh, uh, solo album. I think it was uh, uh, Trust was out at that time. It was right after the Striper Expo, and and you weren't really like you guys had played a one-off show but you weren't really you know all set on reuniting even though a lot of the other bands your peers and whatnot were getting back together at the time and you were kind right. of oh, i remember there was that period of time where you're you doing the whole park ranger thing and, what, and all of a sudden you got this second win and now you're just running with it and it seems like there's no slowing down at this point but uh you know you said you are thinking about retirement and taking longer vacations so yeah, I mean those thoughts yeah. cross my mind. I, I don't see retirement in the future any anytime soon. Um, but you know, I, I, it crosses my mind. I mean, my wife and I, Lisa and I, she's just as busy as I am, if not even more so. And we don't take vacations, you know. And it, yeah. it's kind of sad because we everybody needs a vacation. Yeah. Um, we were we were going to go to Turks and Caicos for our, our honeymoon, and we never did. We wanted to go on a striker tour over to Europe. And it wasn't really a honeymoon, you know. So we're finally going to Turks and Caicos coming up uh, in the next uh, few months. Very cool. So, you know, we we just got to figure those things out. But, man, I still love what I do. And because of that, I I do a lot of it. Uh-huh. You seem you, – and you've got the whole family, at least a good portion of them. We're going to – I saw uh, your daughter helping, you know, put this stuff together and uh, getting us uh, taken care of in Bakersfield there as well. Yeah, I mean Lena. Lena's very involved and, and loves to be a part of it, and that's a blessing to have her. Uh, obviously, Robert, my brother, is the drummer of the band. So when, when I'm traveling, I get to see him. 
Uh, Lisa, my wife, comes out uh, quite often. And, you know, my son on occasion, when he can, he helps. And it's really cool. It's definitely a family uh, It's a family business for sure. I think that, that, that helps, you know, what you do as, as, as a musician. I mean, just having family around all the time. And, and, you know, it's, it, you know, be perfectly honest, you said something recently that really, really struck with me, uh, struck me and, and stuck with me. And I think maybe a lot of people, it was a very humble thing, very human. Uh, it kind of showed that you're a very real person. You need reference, uh, you know, that you, that you get depressed that, you know, you, you have doubts, you have anxieties, you know, uh, oh, yeah. you, you like profanity here and there, you know, and, you know, you listen to heavy metal and, and you're a Christian, you know, and a lot yeah. of people yeah. kind of disconnect that, you know, um, have you gotten feedback on that? I mean, cause it really, it really touched me when I heard that. Man. I, I have got feedback on it. And, you know, it's, I think what happens is a lot of times when you hear that somebody's a Christian, you obviously expect more from them. Uh, and less from them. You know, you don't expect them to drop an F-bomb or drink a glass of bourbon or smoke a cigar or, or whatever. You know, you don't expect those things. You think, okay, they're a Christian. They're going to stop all that stuff. And I just come from a different uh, school, a different mentality. I I think that that's the unfortunate side of Christianity is that often we're told that we've got to give all that stuff up. I don't think we do. You know, I think if you enjoy a glass of wine or a bourbon or a, a, an occasional cigar or, or you drop an F-bomb occasionally, I, I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem lies with when those things rule your life, mm-hmm. you know. So if you're if you're having, you know, three or four bourbons every night and you can't stop having them, then there's a problem. Right. You know, and, and I think just a lot of Christians in the church – tend to focus on those small things and you know i'm a regular guy you know i do get frustrated i do get depressed i you know uh, i do get angry i i you know i'm, I'm a regular person and uh, i think people lose sight of that sometimes so i just like to remind them of that fact that michael rob oz perry were four regular guys who try to do our best right right Absolutely. And I think, you know, uh, it's difficult with with any type of person that's in the limelight like that. Um, you know, I mean, I've met you and, and we talk and we're having this conversation now. And so it's a little bit more real to me, but a lot of people don't have that, that pleasure. They don't have that opportunity. And so, you know, the thought of meeting somebody uh, such as yourself, anybody who's like in, in, in that limelight, like, you know, I don't want to use the term rock star, but you know, you know, professional musician, somebody who's a celebrity type. So it's, it's difficult to, you know, and it has been for in the past for me, you know, people that I've, they haven't met or or had the opportunity to talk to tend to be like just this one dimensional thing where, you know, I hear their music and, and I forget that, look, they're living every day, they're breathing, they're eating, they're, you know, doing the same things that I do. And you, we tend to, to miss the humanity in that. I know, I know. And that, you know, it, with social media, I see that a lot. You know, I, I do my best. I hope I've proven that to be really active on social media and, and try to reach out to as many people as I can and keep fans involved. And I enjoy that. But at the same time, I get a lot of fans who comment and say, man, you didn't, you never respond to me. I'm, I'm not going to follow you anymore. And I just think, wow, um, there's not <laughs> enough, there, there's just not, it's not possible. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's physically impossible to respond to everyone and to see every comment and post. And I think some fans, not all, but some fans forget that, that they got to remember the human side of things. Like, you know, could they, would they be able to respond to everyone? Uh, you know, if they if they had a large group of people that was following them, and I, I doubt it. So I, I just think that it's important for people to remember that we are just regular guys trying to uh, live a regular life and trying to do our best and uh, to have a little bit more grace and, and to you know remember that. Right, right, absolutely. Well, I appreciate uh, you being as transparent as you are, and I do appreciate you 
reaching out on social media because not a lot of musicians do that. And, and I, and I like oh. the idea that it, it helps people connect and, you know, even more than just doing interviews like this. So I, I, I greatly uh, appreciate that. Now you've got a well, new solo you, man. album. <laughs> yeah, man. Anyway. Uh, now you got a new solo album coming out, 10. And uh, man, I mean, as far as your discography, I mean, you know, with Striper is just impressive, but that you put this many solo albums out, is equally impressive because not a lot of people, you know, can get, say, you know, 10 albums, you know, I mean, people are, you know, maybe one or two or three, you know, um, aside, but, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Haven't heard it. So it's going to be a complete surprise. I am interested in what you might be able to tell me because I remember when your first one came out and then the second, and there's been a, an, an evolution in the style and it's kind of thrown some surprises and, you know, not really sure what to expect with each uh, subsequent release. What can you tell me about this new one? Other than well, the guests on there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of guests. It, it, it's, it, the thing about this album and, and the Striper albums is we've gotten heavier as we've gotten older. Yay. Mm. And I think I think that throws people off because usually that's not the case. Most of the time, if not all of the time, bands tend to get a little more mellow as they get older. Mm-hmm. And they start trying different types of music, you know. Uh, uh, so many, so many people that you know, they'll, they'll, you'll see rock guys go country, and you'll see, uh, you know, guys from the classic '70s. Uh, they're doing jazz or you know, big band stuff now. You know, they change their style up, and it's usually a more mellow style. Striper has actually gotten heavier, and if you look at my first solo album to 10 and you listen to all the albums in between you're going to hear that i've kind of done the same thing as a solo artist mm. the reason for that is i don't want to forget our uh our fan base and i don't want to walk too far away from our roots and our roots are metal hard rock and metal mm-hmm. and that's what put us here and that's why i'm here talking to you and I don't want to venture too far away from that because I feel like we'll be alienating our fan base. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've just got this surge in me to go heavy. Uh, the new album is is, a, is definitely a metal album. It's got some hard rock tunes on it. It's got a ballad on it called uh, Let It Be Love. It's not a, a piano ballad. It's, it's a little more unique uh, for me. It's guitar-laden, uh, guitar-based ballad. And then I've got a different guest on every song. The reason why I wanted to do that was to bring something different to every song. I didn't want it to be sound like Michael Sweet playing on every song because then it's just going to sound a lot more like a Striper album. Right. You know, it's, it's just going to happen. So I brought in all these different guys, Gus G, Andy James, uh, Jeff Loomis of Arch Enemy, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Holkstra, Mike Kerr, Rich Ward, Marzi Montazari, uh, Howie Simon, uh, and you know, and I got Todd Latore doing a duet with me of Queen's Rike, and I've got a guy named Ian Raposa doing some vocals on a song, and uh, it's really cool because it brings in some different elements that keeps the album interesting. And I can't wait for people to hear it, man. I, I, I personally think it's my best solo album. Now, not everyone's going to agree with that. Mm-hmm. And that's okay, but I believe it is because there's a certain energy level that's higher on this album, and it's just got something really special to it. Very cool. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Do you plan that you haven't really done a lot of other than the, the acoustic stuff, uh, touring or or playing out live with the solo material since you've been busy with Striper? Is there gonna a chance that you might do some some uh, full band shows with this album with the new solo album that comes out? With? Man, I hope so. Uh, it's real hard to, uh, you know, schedule everything in when Striper's so busy. Uh-huh. It's very hard. And, you know, with the, right now we're rehearsing for five days, six days in Nashville, and then we go and we hit the ground for six weeks. And we've got a lot of stuff on and off throughout the year. And then when I go do solo days, I go out and I'm doing three or four at a time. And if I do a solo tour with the band, I want to do it right. So there's going to be a week of rehearsals and then we got to have enough dates on the books to make it, make it, uh, you know, worth doing. Uh, and that's the hard part. And then all those guys, 
I'd like to use the guys on the album, Will Hunt. He's busy with Evanescence. It's real tricky to put together and match everybody's schedules because everybody's so busy. Right. So it's just it's it's almost impossible, but I do think that there's uh, hope, and I think that we can make it happen at some point, even if it's just some one-off special dates where you know we play one show in Vegas and one show in L.A. and one show in in Boston. And we do yeah. four or five select dates. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I thought maybe it might be inter- you know easier to get like everybody together, like if it was on like a festival date or something. Um, yeah. I know, you know, you know, there's, you might have a lot of those guys around at that time anyways, and you probably get more offers, of course, for Striper anyways. I mean, do you get many offers of people trying to get the solo band to come out? And... I do, but definitely more for Striper, of course. Uh, but I do get more than, than you would think for the, uh, the Michael Sweet band, solo band, because it, you know, I haven't toured with a band since 2001. So, you know, that's a long time, man. It, uh, we're going on 20 years here, and right. there's so many songs. You know, you there's a lot of really cool solo songs, and it'd be great to go out and put together a band and play those songs live for people to hear them. And I think it'd be it might be surprisingly uh, a really good turnout. Yeah, yeah, I think so because it's different. And I, you know, for myself, I can, I can't speak for everybody, but I I dig getting out and seeing a. Uh, you know, different different side and hearing that music live. I mean, I love the album. Right. Love to check it out. Live. Exactly. Yeah, it's different, and it, you know, it's, it it makes it a little more unique. I mean, not to uh, to downplay Striper or any other band that does this, but you know, when you're in a band like Striper and it, it, we've got that following and that name, people want to hear the hits. Right. Right. You know, right. they, they want to hear "Calling on You" and "Tell with the Devil" and "Soldier in Command" a gazillion times, and that's fine. I get it. But year after year after year, you know, it starts to become like, okay, I've heard that before. I've played that before. Uh, it's nice to do something different. Right. I agree, man. Now, it's, um, I don't know, got to get this question out of the way because, uh, you know, it, it can be a touchy subject, you know, bringing this stuff up. But I, I got to say, I love the last Striper album. I love Goddamn Evil. And I thought it was a brilliant name. I was very clever. Most of the people that I know that were, and I don't want not to put anybody down, but anybody who was more theologically inclined really kind of got it, and those who weren't kind of did. But there was, you know, and not to say that that was everybody, but it was definitely controversial. You you knew what you were going to be getting going into it. But you guys have lost some fans because of it. Do you still stand by your decision or your decision or in hindsight, you know, as that? How oh, yeah. Starting? Yeah, totally. And we stand by the decision. Striper isn't about following the leader and, and, you know, playing by the rules. We're about uh, doing things a different way. We always have been. And that's our calling. You know, that's that's just how, it's, how it is. And not everyone's going to accept that. And we understand. It's always been that way from the very beginning. When we released To Hell With The Devil, it got banned from a number of stores. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lost We lost a ton of fans. But we also gained a ton of fans. And that's the same thing with uh, Goddamn Evil. We've lost some fans, but we've gained some fans. And, you know, the people that we've lost, it, it, it comes back to those Christians that I was talking about earlier that think that when they hear that Michael Sweet has a bourbon and they get offended by it, it's it's the mentality of those types of Christians. It's a It's a closed-minded mentality. It's not an open-minded mentality. You know, if they really sit down with me and, hear me out and understand why I feel it's okay to do that. You know, a lot of times when I have people come up to me in the church and they say, um, you don't drink, right? Well, yeah, I do. What? Oh, my gosh. Okay, you just lost me. A lot of times you dig deeper, you'll find out that they were they were a former alcoholic. Right. And they've got a real serious problem with it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they try to apply those rules that they have to have on their lives to your life. Right. And, right. and that's not the way it works. So goddamn evil, you know, we have a lot of people thinking, oh, it's a swear, it's blasphemy, it's this and that, without hearing the statement, without hearing the explanation or reading the lyric and knowing what we meant by it. Mm-hmm. And we just want to break down the walls. We want to try to educate people and make them realize that there's nothing wrong with those three words, goddamn evil. 
It's the way they're used and the way they are referenced. Right, right. Now, like I said, I get it, man. And you know, I'm yeah, and the album, I I love it. Um, curious to see what you guys are gonna do <laughs> next time. Whether you're gonna top that one or really stir the pot some more. <laughs> Well, our next album is going to be called F the Devil. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say, I'm like, wait, <laughs> we know we can only drop the F off. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> now, I got one last one. Oh, I know you're, you're, you're short on time here, and, and uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, overdo it. Um, but um, it's been brought, you know, to your attention in the past, you know, that you go as far as getting offered to play on other bills or something like that with other bands that are your peers or whatever, that doesn't really come along unless it's in a festival type situation or something. I'm mm -hmm. curious to know. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see like you guys and, you know, Dawkin or somebody, you know, go out and play together. And, and to be honest, because like the shows that I have seen where you guys play usually at the whiskey in Hollywood there, Man, um, other than as I was working with the band Worldview a few years back, and they played, and they got like the the opening slot, <laughs> and then I had sure. to, yeah. I had to suffer through like six other bands that were like not even in the same genre. I mean, not not even it wasn't even about whether, whether or not they were Christians or not. It was like the music sucked, man. It was horrible for a lot of these I bands. Get it. And I'd love to see a really good package. Like you're going, going to South America with uh, Tourniquet and Narnia playing with you. That's a that's a package. Um, yeah, I know. Fun. It's 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 really hard. There's there's some reason uh, for it, and I could, I've never been able to figure it out. It, but I do understand. Of course, it always comes down to finances at the end of the day. But when we go to South America, for example, there's a lot more demand for the Christian packages, the Christian metal packages, I should say. So Tourniquet, Narnia, and Striper, that that strikes everybody's interest, and there's a demand for it, so financially it makes sense. The promoter's not going to lose a shirt or house. We're not going to lose our shirts or house houses. And, um, you know, that's got to be in place or we can't do something, and people forget about that. Here in the States, there isn't a demand for that. You know, in other words, if Striper goes out and plays the whiskey and we sell it out uh, and we bring in Guardian or Bloodgood or, or whoever, it, it might not, you know, the, the old saying one plus one always doesn't equal two. Uh -huh. it, it, it might not make a difference in the buyer selling more tickets yet having to pay out more money for that opener. And that's always the tricky part is, you know, people are putting out more money, but they're not necessarily making that money back. And uh, you go to South America and it works out that way. You come here, it doesn't. So that's why you don't always see those old classic metal uh, lineups like that, which would be great. We'd love to go out and do Narnia and Tourniquet and Striper here in the States, but you know, it just most likely won't make sense financially. Yeah. No, I I, hear I know it's it's logistics and finances and whatnot. Some of the yeah. bands that are in the L.A. area, like, because you tend to have different opening bands for each show. And I know there's, like, a, a really good band in L.A. called Stonebreed. I'd love to see. I mean, they would be great. I, I'd love to see yeah. that play uh, with you guys. Um, or, like, you know, like I said, Doc and some of the, you know, of course, there's the, you know, who's going to headline type stuff, but like the, you know, the guys from, from the original Dawkins band, you know, they got the, the, the end machine, you know, would be a cool, uh, right. You know, thing. So there's something like that of the caliber, just a better caliber of than just whatever band I got you. Can, can sell enough tickets to get on the bill and say they played with Striper. Yeah, I, I get it, man. I do. I totally understand. A lot of times these buyers for these clubs, you know, to get the local bands that are willing to go out and sell 50 or 100 tickets mm. and work for them and do all their promoting for them. A lot of these buyers don't like to promote. Right. You know, you not like the old days. They used to they used to legitimately promote and invest in promoting the show. Now they rely on everyone else to do it for them. Right. You know, for the 
the headlining band that would be posting on their Facebook every day and the opening bands would be out putting flyers in malls and selling tickets and, and, and then they, you know, that's it. And it's just a different world, man. Uh, I wish some of these buyers, some of them do, but I wish the other buyers that don't would take on more of that old school mentality and promote a little bit more and maybe we'd all be better off. Yeah, definitely. Where's the wisdom, Michael? <laughs> yeah. Maybe somebody yeah, will hear this interview and it'll happen. Yeah, and with these bands, these other bands, man, I wish we had some say. Sometimes we don't have any say over who's opening for us. Sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. And we walk in, and not to knock some of the opening bands, but sometimes we're thinking, gosh, we wish we had a different opening band on the, on the bill tonight. Because it doesn't make sense sometimes, you know? Right, yeah. Yeah. I hear you, man. Well, we can only hope the best for the future and we'll see what, what, what transpires and what happens. I, I wanna thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, it's been a nice nice talking to you. Yeah. Really looking forward to both the, the new solo album and the next striper album of course. And uh I know you guys aren't really I don't think you're coming to uh the Southern California area on this next door, but Hopefully we'll catch we'll you when you travel. do. We'll try and travel. <laughs> that would be great. I'd love to see you guys. And um, thanks for always being there and, and, and talking to me and supporting us. And you guys go make some good breakfast or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about that. We will. We will. And we'll send you a picture so you know who you were talking to. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, do it. Do yeah, it. You'll, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember you guys. <laughs> you will. Yeah. You will. <laughs> All right, Michael. You guys yeah, are awesome. day, man. Oh, uh, you, you guys too. Yeah. Have, have an awesome day. You guys are fantastic, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Okay. All, All right, right sweet Michael. All right, God bless, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.